Welcome to Career Day. It's time to find your path. Growing up, you may have wanted to become a police officer or a firefighter. That would make sense. Those are the public service careers that have the greatest visual presence around the city. But there are thousands of public service employees working behind the scenes every day to keep Houston running. There are many career paths with the city you can choose. Spend a few minutes learning about a couple of these opportunities. We've got jobs to fit almost any interest. Stick with us and we'll help you find the right path to your future public service career. Ready? Like the outdoors? You can serve your city by becoming a horticulturist, sport instructor, or a bikeway and pedestrian program coordinator. My name is Dan Rain. I'm the bicyclist and pedestrian coordinator for the city of Houston. What does that mean? That means that I work with folks in the transportation department, construction, parks and planning, and the mayor's office and council members to make sure that we provide the best facilities we can for walking and biking and address problems, uh, and also find opportunities for folks to be able to walk and bike. Now I know that I've ridden a bike since I was a kid, and I bet you have too. And it's a lot of fun. But you know, you don't have to stop once you become an adult. You can keep doing it. And then sometimes, sometimes you can actually make a career out of it. So I'll spend a lot of my days trying to work with folks and, and incorporate bicycle considerations into transportation projects whether it's streets or bridges or along the bayous, which are pretty popular in town, to make sure that we provide the best facility we can in a cost-effective manner and so that people can move around the city walking and biking without too much difficulty. And one of the best things I love about it is addressing problems that people bring to our attention. You know, sometimes it's just a need to sweep a bike lane and, and make it clear. But other times it's actually particularly challenging. If there's a, an intersection that needs improvement, how do we make that possible? Uh, you know, sometimes parked cars on the roadway can be a real obstacle for bicyclists. And we'll review some of the parking uh, set up at an intersections and modify it so that bicyclists will have a smoother travel through the intersection. But it's really being able to address problems and find improvements to make it a better situation for everyone and working with so many different engineers, whether they're design engineers or construction engineers or, or even folks that uh, work in real estate so that we can address now and plan for the future and, and find ways to bring nonprofits and the city together with state and federal funding to really just build a better future for Houston. Are you an animal lover? Many city jobs work with animals. A couple examples are from HPD's Mounted Patrol and the Bureau of Animal Control's Chief Veterinarian. Well, my name is Dr. Tony Malone. I'm the Chief Veterinarian for the City of Houston Animal Shelter. And my job here as Chief Veterinarian is to make sure that we try and do everything we can to adopt out as many animals that come in here, uh, predominantly dogs and cats. Um, what's great about my job is I get to interact with all of the animals that come into the shelter, and it also allows me to uh, have a very, very re rewarding sense of being that we're able to adopt out and get out as many animals as we can. Shelter medicine is one that is quite rewarding because again, there's no, uh, can't control the amount of animals that come into the shelter, but we do have an impact on how many that we can get out alive to get into, into homes and things like that. So um, again, if this is a career for you, uh, I would recommend that you stay in school, study hard, and do everything you can to be successful. The favorite part of coming in is being able to look at every animal that comes into the shelter and knowing that I'm playing a part with this animal, being able to go into a home being able to be adopted out or being rescued or fostered. I actually have two dogs and two cats. And actually, my dogs are both products of Bark. As long as I can remember, I've wanted to be a veterinarian. It was a bird one time that, that fell and was injured and I ended up trying to you know, 
splinted leg and so you know always wanted to always had that love for animals and so it just uh, it just seemed right for me to pursue this it's just great to, to come here uh, you know this this job has really become more uh, and given me more uh, than, than all the other positions that I've had as a veterinarian because again as a shelter veterinarian, you really, and not only shelter veterinarian, but being the chief veterinarian here, it really does have an impact on us being able to, to help in the community and to help these animals that otherwise may not have a, have a chance. Are you calm under pressure? Staying calm, cool, and collected in stressful situations are a must for many jobs, including 911 emergency operators and public information officers. I'm a public information officer for the City of Houston Municipal Courts Department. And in that role, I wear many hats. Um, one of the most public-facing hats is that of spokesperson for the Courts Department. So basically what that means is that when there is media attention on the courts or there is a public statement that's needed, then I am the person who does that for municipal courts. So I interact with the media whenever they have questions about something that may have occurred or they're following up on a lead that they may have heard from the police department about someone who's in our courts on a case or uh, they have questions about someone who was involved in an accident and they want to know if there's any other records uh, of violations on that person. They'll contact me and I will give them the, the official statement from the court regarding that matter or I will provide them with a public record um, uh, of the responsive information that they're requesting. Another thing that I really enjoy about being a public information officer is the crisis management and the crisis communications portion of the job. If there is something that happens in the city of Houston, it, um, for instance, a hurricane or flooding or um, God forbid a bomb threat or anything that threatens the population here at the court, the staff and the citizens, then it's very important that they get immediate information and a calm uh, comforting and a reassuring way that's going to give them the information that they need to be able to know what they need to do next to get us out of that emergency situation. So in my role, I have to both educate our staff and send information out to the, to the uh, citizens that may be in, within our facility, as well as to educate the, and send those messages out to the media so that they can educate the public at large about what municipal courts may be doing in the midst of a crisis. Also, as a spokesperson, we do community outreach with um, the uh, community civics associations, schools, and what we try to do when we go out to the public is to educate them about, number one, if you have a citation, here's the best way to take care of it and not to ignore it because unfortunately a large part of our population in Houston have chosen that option and it's not a good option. So the first thing we want to tell people is that there's many ways to take care of your court business. Ignoring it is not one of them because we want to prevent you from going into warrant status. So we really try to educate them on all the different ways that they can take care of their cases. Uh, the other thing is we try to talk about prevention, especially to the emerging driver population, those in middle school and high school. And so what we try to teach them about is getting good driving habits even before you start to drive, such as don't text and drive. Um, that five seconds that you're not paying attention to what's going on in the road can mean the difference in life and death. And so what we try to do is to bring down the teen driving um, accident uh, rate in Texas by teaching them or encouraging them not to even start those bad habits. Do you like science? The city employs all types of scientists, ranging from chemists to microbiologists. Uh, I'm a microbiologist for the city of Houston at the Bureau of Laboratory Services. Uh, work in the infectious uh, disease uh, section where uh, we basically test highly infectious disease uh, to see what's uh, out there in the environment. So the, the awesome thing about my job is just working with the people I work with. I get to work with you know hazmat, HPD, FBI, and that's really neat. Uh, you know first responders. And the other great thing is like uh, working with epidemiologists and all sorts of aspects of public health. So that basically, whenever there is something out there, like we're sort of the forefront of like trying to find out, you know, what potentially dangerous agents are out there or, or bacteria that could uh, uh, affect public health. 
So that's like one of the awesomest things to, to know that you're involved in. You know, you're like that tip of the sword, so to speak. So I went to college, you know, uh, uh, when I was in college, I was really good at the natural sciences. So I got involved in uh, biochemistry for me and genetics. And then uh, after I graduated, you know, I really uh, went into research. I think it's one of like the natural steps that most people, when they get out of science, you know, they get into some kind of research job. But for me, it just really wasn't quite what I wanted. I wanted something that like I felt more like I actually helped the public. I actually meant more, like I made more of a difference. Research kind of becomes monotonous. You do the same thing and you're sort of like looking for something. Then you sometimes don't even know what you're looking for. So for me, it was, it was just natural to you know, come here to the city and apply for a position in public health where it was really important, like I feel really accomplished here. You know, you sit here and like, you know, you're reading about things that the CDC puts out or you know, new investigations or new viruses or bacteria that are coming out. And next thing you know, like here in public health, like we're actually dealing with them. You know, we go to the CDC, get training, and then we come here and actually take that training that we've learned and apply it here and for the better good of the city and surrounding counties and you know, for public health. Do you like helping people? Many positions enable you to give aid to those who need it. Examples include a special services representative helping internal travelers and an employee assistance program counselor helping other employees. I'm the manager of the city of Houston's employee assistance program and my background is uh, education wise is a master's degree in social work and I'm licensed as a clinical social worker and certified as an employee assistance professional. And the important role that the employee assistance program serves is, a, is being a helper for all 22,000 more or less city employees. The city recognizes that the normal problems of life that people have can impact both the home life and the work, world of work. And so it's our role as professional counselors to help employees and managers deal with personal problems, increase productivity, take care of home problems, which serves the city, the employee, family, the supervisors, and everyone well, uh, that we have a happier, more productive workforce. What I like about my job is the variety of employees that work for the city. Uh, they are some of the most delightful people that I have ever met in my whole life. Um, whether you're talking about a high-level executive or the uh, newly hired uh, street, street uh, maintenance workers, they're interesting, creative, and all have wonderful stories. I get to make a difference in people's lives in a positive way. When someone comes in the employee assistance office with their head down, they're dragging, they're hopeless, and they walk out smiling, laughing, feeling like they have options and choices to deal with those issues, um, that's, that makes my day. Do you want to save the planet? If improving the environment is your mission, you've found your place. The city has many environmental related jobs, ranging from a recycling center manager to a public health investigator. I'm an environmental investigator with the Houston Department of Health and Human Services. Um, I've been employed with the department for about 26, 27 years, and uh, I really enjoy uh, working with people, helping people. Uh, we're public servants, and what we do, uh, by responding to complaints and investigating um, sources is protecting the citizens of Houston, protecting them from pollution problems, uh, problems with uh, the watershed and so forth. I really enjoy meeting people, talking with people. We talk with people at the companies, uh, the sources. Uh, we issue citations when we find problems and that helps the citizens who are complaining about the problems that they can't solve on their own. Most of the investigators have uh, science backgrounds and uh, biology, chemistry, environmental science. And um, it's a perfect job. We're outside in the environment. And like I said, we enjoy talking and working with people to resolve problems. Some of the environmental investigators here investigate complaints. They monitor using um, uh, handheld tools. Uh, we have uh, what's called uh, 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 PID, um, photo ionization detector, 
We have uh, grim and has dust, which we use to monitor dust emissions. Uh, we have an uh, infrared camera, which we use to uh, uh, investigate emissions from stacks or things that may not be visible to the eye. Um, we also have a, a mobile laboratory. So if something requires long-term monitoring, for example, someone's complaining about emissions from a company, uh, we'll set the, mo the mobile laboratory out there for a period of time and it'll uh, measure the amount of emissions coming from that company over a time frame and what types of emissions are coming from that. And that's why it requires a, a good chemistry, biology, science background so that you'll know um, the impact of the chemicals coming from the company to the citizens. Do you like big machines? Always been fascinated by trucks? You might like being an equipment operator with the city. We've got all kinds of big equipment to operate. I'm uh, EO3 uh, with the city of Houston Solid Waste Department. I've been EO3 for about four years now, going on five. It's a three-man crew. It's his crews divided into three-man crew. Uh, we got two trailer trailers, and I'm the operator. Uh, I just load the, you know, go house from house and load the uh, the material, you know, and they go dispose of at the landfill. The city uh, have uh, great opportunities because uh, when I, when I first got here, I started on the real load. I started on the back of the real load, and that's uh, on the back, you, you know, mainly on the back, and sometimes you drive, but mainly on the back picking up stuff you know, like the yard waste or whatever. And I started back there and I just took it upon myself uh, and took the uh, advantage of the opportunities that the city brings So uh, and kept getting promoted. And right now, uh, I'm a year old three. I started as a side loader uh, because it's, it's the labor, then side loader, then senior side loader, then year old three. And currently right now, um, uh, I have opportunities I'm trying to uh, also advance into management, be a supervisor. So it's a, it's, it's a whole lot of opportunities for someone coming in. Uh, you know, I, I, I recommend this to my kids and grandkids because it's a really great opportunity. And also they have programs where you uh, call the Cape Center where you can, you know, take up classes to, uh, you know, to learn more and, and advance yourself. Are you a techie, obsessed about your smartphone? Do all of your friends turn to you for advice on the newest, latest technology? From network administrators to GIS analysts, the city has a job you can be good at. I'm the GIS supervisor for the Enterprise Development Group here, the Planning and Development Department. And uh, primarily we're responsible for anywhere between four and 500 map and data requests from inside the city and outside the city requests every year, internal and external. Cartography itself is kind of my specialty. It's what I went to school for. So um, uh, whenever they pull me in, for, they, sometimes they'll pull me in for really complicated, just not your ordinary ad hoc type data or map requests, things that require flood analysis, raster analysis, 3D uh, visualization and animations and those types of things. Um, I try to take spreadsheets and databases and kind of kind of bring them to life, make them more realistic. Um, yeah, you can you can take a presentation and give it to give it to anybody if it's in the form of spreadsheets and charts and those types of things. It's it's great, but if you can put these things together in the form of a geographic product, something that people instantly understand and recognize, and that's that's kind of where I go with this. I take a, I take non non geographic things and make them picturesque. What I love about this position is that every single assignment. Every single request is is different. Everything is varied. There's a lot of variability. Uh, some weeks are really fast. Some weeks are really slow. Uh, sometimes we get a lot of requests. We get new council members. We get a new election. We get a new mayor. Um, lots of things uh, you know, need to be taken care of and done. Lots of requests for maps and data and aggregations to different types of things. Um, and then sometimes it's not as fast on the internal side, and we get a lot of requests from outside companies, um, engineering firms, consulting companies that you know, look to the city of Houston as the data source, the uh, official data source, which we are for a lot of things. We compile a lot of data, but we are the data source for a lot of, a lot of different uh, departmental information. The variability is what I like. It's, it's never the same thing. It always keeps moving and keeps me on my toes. The, the technology in general is, uh, we use primarily, we're at Esri Shop, we use ARC Info back here. 
Um, the latest version of ARC info we use is 10, 10 and it's, um, it's, it's complicated, but, you know, not so complicated that, you know, people can't pick it up, which is why we've got a training program. So, we use that, and, uh, you know, a lot of folks request CAD data. We take stuff in and out of CAD data from time to time, do a lot of geocoding, which is basically taking customer requests, anyone could be a customer, requests for addresses, and putting them on maps, and then overlaying, you know, city boundaries, and council boundaries, and stuff like that, aggregating that type of data. So it's it's pretty fun. It's specialized and it always changes. Keeping up with it is just part of the fun of that job. Are you interested in the health field? Maybe a health-related career with the city is for you. We've got many health professional careers. I am a nurse. I am a nurse coordinator or team leader. I supervise programs like a family planning, immunizations, and STD clinic too. Those services provide for the community. In this area, we need medical assistance or certified medical assistant, uh, LVNs, and RNs. Uh, we have the other program working with us, like a kid village, how to connect customers with the right service, uh, to have a medical home available, easy access. We have a pre milestone too. And we have our clerks that are working with that kind of um, process. That means that we have a different positions that you can apply for the city of Houston. One thing that I really I'll advise to whoever come to the city of Houston is to come proactive, to give you 100%, not to slack back, because we need employees that are ready to give out they're 100 percent. I'm very content working for the city of Houston, I will say, and one thing that you really need to ask yourself, and you're happy where you are, if you enjoy your job. If you enjoy your job, you're gonna really, you will not have a stress. That's my, my advice to you. Do you like to interact with all kinds of people? If you are the type of person who gets along with everyone, the city has a position or two for you, ranging from librarians to parking enforcement officers. I've been working with the city of Houston for a total amount of six years. My job title is parking enforcement leader. I was promoted to my position with the city of Houston in 2008, but I started off as a parking enforcement officer. What I like most about my job is I get to walk outside, I get to meet people, and my job consists of being customer service driven. I'm also an ambassador for the city, so when citizens ask for directions, they need help, that's what the yellow card is for, ambassador for the city. The ambassador program consists of several things. We, we learn CPR, we learn about the different ins and outs with the city government. Um, we learn about how to help the tourists throughout the city. We, we, it teach you how to be customer service driven. I would like young people to know that parking management have several job opportunities. I worked my way up to a parking enforcement leader in 2008. And I've been with the city for a total amount of six years. And it doesn't stop here. I would like to rise higher and higher, and you can go as high as you want. You can even transfer to different departments and be promoted to different departments within city government. So it's a great opportunity for you to start a career within working with the city of Houston. Well, that's just the tip of the iceberg for public service jobs in the city of Houston. Just take a look at this list. 